Anointing should be pleasant everywhere you go. Love should be flowing everywhere you go. It shouldn't just be pleasant because you're in the church. When you meet a stranger, it should be pleasant. When you meet somebody you don't know, it should be pleasant. The anointing, my God, will always work. Today on the Daily Gospel Network. Love cast out fear. Perfect love cast out fear. Therefore, if you got perfect love on this side, you don't have to worry about stuff maintaining. You just got to keep on doing what God say do. Amen. Welcome. I'm Megan Reed with the Daily Gospel Network where we bring you inspiring church services and sermons from pastors, churches, and choirs from all over the country. And today is no different. Get ready to be encouraged and blessed by Pastor Gavera Johnson of Interdenominational Faith Assembly in Baton Rouge. Let's take a listen. amen and amen so if you get if you go with your bibles and go or your ipads or your cell phone ezekiel 34 i want to go there and notice we're still talking about the anointing that's supposed to be in the church amen everybody say the anointing that's supposed to be in the church amen and upon our lives Amen. We are the church of a living God. Amen. So if here's Psalms 34, I want to read the first, four, first five verses, and then I go to another scripture and try to talk about the anointing that was on Jesus' life and uh, how we should mimic him and get information from him by the Spirit of God. Amen. We have the Word of God as our playbook, and we live by the playbook. Amen. But we also got to be obedient to what God is saying. So uh, Ezekiel 34, 1 through 5. And the word of the Lord came unto me, saying, Son of man, prophesy against the shepherds of Israel. Prophesy and say unto them, Thus saith the Lord God unto the shepherds. Yes. Woe be to the shepherds of Israel that do feed themselves. Should not the shepherds feed the flocks? Yes. Ye eat the fat, and ye clothe, and ye clothe you, with the wool. Ye kill them that are fed. Yes. But ye feed not the flock. Yes. The disease have ye not strengthened it. Neither have ye healed that which was sick. Yes. Neither have ye bound up that which was broken. Neither have ye brought again that which is driven away. Yes. Neither have ye sought that which was lost. Yes. But with force and with cruelty have ye ruled them. Uh huh. Really? And they were scattered. Because there is no shepherd, and they became meat to all the beasts of the field. Yes. When they were scattered. Stop right there. Uh, those first five verses. Let's go to uh, Hebrews, the 12th chapter, and the first two verses. And then I'll give you a little text on the anointing on Jesus and give you a key thought from that 13th chapter, I mean, the 12th chapter of Hebrews. Wherefore? 
seeing we also are compassed about with so great a cloud of witnesses, let us lay aside every weight and the sin which do it so easily beset us, and let us run with patience the race that is set before us. Amen. Looking unto Jesus. Yes. The author. Stop right there. I want you to get this in your mind. It say, looking unto Jesus. The author. Everybody say, looking unto Jesus. So we see in Ezekiel that the shepherds lost focus of who the flock was. Amen. And God gave Ezekiel a word on how they would not go after and do certain things for the sheep. Amen. So here in Hebrews, Paul is writing and letting us know to look unto Jesus the author, the author, and finish of our faith. So let me ask you a question: Who started your Who started your saved life? Amen. Come on, say Jesus. Jesus. Who's going to finish it? Jesus. So right now, God is uh, He's like He's the author of your life, and you are a book to Him. Amen. And He is uh, writing every chapter in your life. He's going to finish the chapter when He says so. Amen. Nobody can close the book until God closes it on your life. Yes. Amen? Yes. So watch what it says. Look here unto Jesus, the author and finisher of our faith, who for the joy that was set before him yes. endured the cross. Endured the cross. Despising the shame. Despised folks talking about him and slapping and spitting on him. And he sat down. And the then right he sat down. <laughs> Boy, I'm telling you, you can sit down once you know God is on your side. You can sit down with the heavenly Father because the Bible says we sit or we are seated in heavenly places with Christ. Amen. I'm asking every believer today to take your proper seat. Amen. Make sure you know who you're sitting by. Amen. Make sure that you know that you're sitting by God that knows everything. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. Hallelujah. He sit down at the right hand of the throne of God. And how many know we're in the same place where he is. Amen. We're heirs with God and we're joint heirs with Christ Jesus. So I want to deal with the shepherd's heart today, Amen. which is Jesus who had the anointing to walk in the earth and deal with the sheep. Yeah. So if you ever, if you ever going to do anything in life and you want to be uh, somebody great, you have to know you have to serve first. Yeah. Serving is something God wants all us to do. And I spoke on this before. You got to serve without complaining. Amen. So watch in this chapter. Let's go back to Ezekiel because I'm going to mix this up with Luke because I'm going to come back to Luke, the fourth chapter, to tie this in, you know, because he's letting the shepherds know here that you shouldn't, my God, uh, uh, not be taking care of my flock. My flock is very important to me. Amen. 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 So watch what it says. I want to bring out some of the things in that fourth. Go to that fourth verse and watch. I want to show you. And watch what it says. They you, have disease. So, the disease have they yet not strengthened. So that the word disease is the same word as weakened. So what happened is uh, you see people get weak from, my God, what go on in the middle of a flock or a congregation. And the shepherd was not strengthening them. And they became diseased or crippled. In their mind. Amen. So we can be weak minded. Amen. Somebody can tell us something that causes us to be gone on the left side, and you haven't heard God's voice on it. And so, therefore, the shepherd has to go and clear it up because somebody made that sheep run for something else. Amen. Can I get amen? amen? Now, I've studied this all night long, and I've been looking at it, I've been looking at the context of it, and I'm going to hit y'all with a bomb today. <laughs> amen. I'm going to let a bomb sit right here and let it explode today. And I hope the glory of God will rescue you and get your attention. Amen. I'm understanding this one thing about preaching. Half of the time, folks don't hear nothing we're saying. They only hear what they want to hear. They're not hearing what the word is saying. They only hear what they want to hear. And they want to make sure that they get something that even not pertaining to the word of God. And so they'll take a message and clip it up and put it in snippets for, for themselves and not get the meat out of it. Amen. I want you today to get the meat out of the word of God. Amen. I don't want you to hear something that you think is being said. I want you to hear the word of God. Amen. 
Amen? So watch what it says. Now, the weak, the weak uh, folk that, now I'm, that got the Hebrew on the weak, that we, it means the disease. It's also the same word as disease. And it also uh, to be, uh, means to be sore, the pain, the fever, or the anemic. Some folks are anemic. Some folks are walking around in pain. And some folks just feeble. Amen. And the shepherd with the anointing on him has to strengthen them through the word of God. Amen. And the leaders that call themselves leaders and the ministers that call themselves ministers has to help strengthen the flock. Amen. 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 When God gives you a team, our job is to make sure we strengthen everybody that comes through that door. Amen. In spite of what they're going through. Amen. Amen. So you're going to have those that are the sore. You're going to have those that are in pain. How many know Jesus died for all this I'm talking about? Amen. Amen. He was wounded for all transgressions. He was bruised for our iniquities. The chastisement of his peace was upon us. And by his stripes, we are here. So everything I'm calling out, we can be healed from. Just because people are walking around looking healthy and fine don't mean they're not sick. Don't mean that they're not weak. Because you can get folk talking in tongues. and I mean, they can get on fire and then when they get into their zone, they, they're fearful. And they're afraid. They're afraid to obey God. They're afraid because, you know, you can get excited right here. This is the excitement zone. This is where we come and lift our hands. But when you walk out of here, can you still be excited about what God is doing for you? And so here, he's telling these shepherds, my God, you prophesy against them. Make sure you let them know, woe be unto them. That's not taking care of my flock. So he's giving Ezekiel a command. And then what, the next one is that, watch Neither what he says. Now, now how many know sick. Jesus came to heal that which was sick? So we're looking at two types of healing. You got, you got those that are weak, and name that in the Greek what it was. When you're weak, you're anemic. You, you, you just, when you're anemic, you can't take too much. Amen. Your resistance is low. Amen. When you're in pain, you can't take too much. Amen. Everybody always opening that scar up on you. Amen. Y'all going to say amen? Amen. <laughs> amen. amen. So you need the under shepherd or the shepherd that's over everybody to minister to you. Amen. I'm going to do my job giving you the word, then the over shepherd or the ones that's over us going to come to you and finish the job. Amen. Can I get amen? amen? My job is to bring the good word of God to you. You have to feed off the word of God. Jesus' job is to come in and, and confirm what has been preached. Amen. So how many are you open for God to come in amen. and bless you? Here, he's letting us know that these men were not doing what they were supposed to do, and they were, my God, causing the flock to scatter. How many know if you look at the church at large, we got hurting people everywhere. We, the, the, the flock has scattered. They're running off anywhere and going any place, and they're still not getting nourished from the Word of God. Amen. Or can I say nourishment from the Word of God? Amen. And then when they come to a place where God can speak to them, we got folk here destroying what God is trying to build up. Amen. Amen. I got a revelation on this too. I'm going to give it to you at the end. I might give it to you right now, but watch this. It's, it's a dangerous thing to mess with God's children Amen. when he have not gave you permission to. It's a dangerous thing to say something about somebody and God had not gave you permission to say it. Amen. Amen. And so watch this. And, and in all that they did to Jesus, he still went to the cross, despised the shame, and he did it with joy. Amen. Amen. So God is telling you, look at the way I walked. I despised the shame. I had joy in my heart, and I went all the way to the cross for all of us. Amen. I finished my course, and now I'm sitting on the right-hand side of the Father, and all those that accept me, I got them sitting by me. Amen. Jesus prayed a prayer in John 17. Let's go with that prayer real quick. He prayed a prayer. Watch this. You and I will not knock nobody from what God has started. He is the author and the finisher of our faith. The anointing is on the shepherd. My God, I'm talking about the shepherd that died for everybody. He's the shepherd and bishop of our soul. So when I'm talking about a shepherd, I'm talking about the one that had not sinned, period. And if you don't look at him, the one that's opening your life and giving you what you need, you're going to miss everything God is saying. He is who we ought to look at. He is the one that we have to might keep our eyes on. If we don't, we're going to miss God immediately. Because the flock is looking at stuff that's not even pertaining to the word of God. 
Amen. And then they're not even reading the word of God. Give, them, give you an assignment, you go home and go to sleep on it. I bring you gossip, you stay up all night long. John 17. The word, these words spake Jesus. Yes. And lifted up his eyes to heaven. Yes. And said, Father, the hour is come. Glorify thy son. Yes. That thy son also may glorify thee. Yes. As thou hast given him power over all flesh. Yes. That he should Hold up. Did you life. hear that? God has given Jesus power over all flesh. Yes. Not some flesh. Just not you. All flesh. Mm-hmm. Read. Watch this prayer. He's praying right now. Read. That he should give eternal life. That he should give eternal life. To as many as thou hast given as him. As many as he will give him. So God has given folks to Jesus to nourish, and he's given, put them in our care to make sure we feed them the right way. Do you not know the story of the man, my God, the Jericho story? They went down, my God, and they left the man half dead. And the priest went by who had an anointing. And the Levite went by and had an anointing. You so anointed that you can't help nobody. You got an anointing on you, and it comes from God, but you're walking right by people that need help. You're only going to the people you think can give you something. And God wants you to know, everybody that you're walking by, I gave power to them to get to this place. They might not have what you have, but I gave them power to come to where you need to be and to be set free and be mended back together. Mm Mm-hmm. Uh-huh. God has given everybody the authority to come where they're coming to. Yes. He has the power to do what he's doing yes. with people yes. without my permission. Yes. Watch what it says. And this is life eternal. Yes. That they might know thee. That they might know who? Thee. Jesus is saying that they might know the heavenly father. The Read only Elder. true God. Yes, the only true God. And Jesus Christ, yes, whom thou hast sent, whom you have sent, I have glorified thee on earth. Look, he said, I have glorified you on the earth. I have finished the work. I have finished my work, which thou givest me, gavest me to do. Yes. And now, O Father, mm-hmm. glorify thou me with thine own self. So watch this. Jesus was asking the Father to put me back in my right place. I finished the course. If you ever want to be in right standing with God, stay on the side. Ask him to keep you in the right place. Don't let him, but you get away from him and you do something else. Make sure that you keep your eyes on the author and the finisher of your faith. Amen. The world has bewitched the church to believe something that we're not supposed to believe. And in this text, as I was reading, what happened is uh, when God set up the, the system, the religious system was set up with it. The prophet and the priest were supposed to go in when it was during the political time. Amen. And then they mixed it where it couldn't come out. And they were supposed to keep it separate. They mixed politics and religion together. Amen. And then they couldn't break it. They got in trouble. Amen. And so they started having perverted love. And perverted love won't, they won't, perverted love won't, ha- it's power uncontrollable. You pervert the love, then you can't stop it, and then you go into stuff that you can't control. Amen. I done studied this text for y'all tonight. Amen. And sometimes our love is perverted. Amen. And then we get into a place we want to control everybody with perverted love. Amen. So God is telling the shepherd, don't let your love be perverted. Amen. Make sure that you don't have no control over nobody. You let them do what they want to do when they feel like doing it. Let them go where they want to go when they feel like going. Yeah, Don't stop nobody from doing nothing they want to do. Yeah. You just make sure you preach the word to them. Yeah. They don't belong to you. They belong to me. Yeah. So you, you have free reign to do what you want to do. Yes, sir. So you're not bound to me. You can be free from me. Amen, Amen Walls. Amen. I'm telling you, God will hold the shepherd before he holds the sheep. So I'm making sure that I don't get in your room where you have, where you think you got to be bound to me, you can be free from me. Amen. It's somehow y'all saying something, freedom, freedom. You can be free. You don't have to be bound. I don't, you don't need my permission to do something. Do what you want to do. 
This is a text you need to hear today. Amen. Make sure you get everything I'm saying that you don't pervert what God is saying right here. Amen. There's an anointing on Jesus. He didn't come to play with the folk. He came to do business. Then he healed them. He set them free. He dealt with the religious folk. He let them know there was vipers. He let them know there were snakes. He told them, come from among them. Don't, don't even act like them. My God, don't let your righteousness be as a righteousness as Pharisees and Sadducees. Don't even do what they do. Amen. Just look to me and live holy. Amen. Can I get amen? amen? And perverted love is controlled love. When we go home and study this text, you're going to see perverted love going to come up. Amen. They perverted the truth and they destroyed the flock. Y'all got quiet on me now. <laughs> Don't let your love be perverted. Amen. 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 Jesus is praying a prayer right now that he's, he didn't connect all of his disciples. And then he say, I only miss one, the one that changed on me. Amen. He could have kept him. But he changed on him. Amen. And Jesus loved him to the end until he changed on him. Amen. He praying a prayer and telling him, thank you for all the know that gave me. In other words, when God give, when God give Jesus this flock, he keeps us. Amen. And he don't care what you know about somebody, he still keeps that person. Amen. That person belongs to God. Amen. Not you, not me, not your friend, not your girlfriend. It belongs, he belongs and she belongs to God. I'm going to give it a nugget at the end. Amen. I was about to throw it out just then. I'm going to give it at the end. Let me get back to my text. I want you to stop that prayer right there. Go back to Ezekiel and watch this. I need to get to this point where, you know, when, when folk are sick, they get, I got the Hebrew word for sick. And it said the Hebrew word for healed is to mend by stitching or the repair of something torn, split or broken. Literally, it would mean to cure or to make whole or complete. When folks are being healed by God, he is stitching stuff up you know nothing about. Amen. And you get up under some type of false, perverted anointing that you can hear God's voice and go tear up the stitching. Because you think God told you to do something. And God is trying to heal them completely. And you take your anointed self over there and mess up the healing process. You're going to see God was mad with these shepherds. Say, woe be unto them. You know we got a woe chapter up in the New Testament, right? Amen. Same God. Amen. He was mad with folk because, I'm not I'm going to say angry because, you know, God anger don't last but for a moment. Amen. I ain't going to say God is a God up there. Been, he just, he, when he's trying to get his flock to be delivered and set free, we got folks with a perverted, false, fake love walking up like they know something. Give you a word, then drop the end of it and drop a bomb on you at the end. Amen. They come talking in tongues. The Lord is speaking to me, baby. I know he's speaking to me. And then they, they'll give you something good. Then at the end, they'll drop something bad. Amen. <laughs> and you got a right to block them Amen. and stop them Amen. after they speak the good. Amen. You can have to receive the bad. You have a right. You have a right to guard your heart Amen. so nobody can run you from your local assembly or your assembly. Amen. Read the text. Read it. Watch what it says. When, you go, when God is healing people, he's stitching them up. He's amending them. He's, he's putting broken bones back into place. Amen. Go to the scripture right quick. Go to Galatians 6, chapter, the first verse. I'm preaching to y'all right now. Watch what it says. Brethren, if a man be overtaken in a fault. So if somebody's been overtaken in a fault. Ye which are spirit. You that are no God. Restore. You should restore. Such a one. Such a one. In the spirit of meekness. In the spirit of meekness, not the spirit of gossip in the spirit of hell. You are to restore that person because you're the one spiritual. And if you don't, God will hold you accordingly. You can't run half cop and talk about I'm going to restore the person then bring all bad news to them when they need to be healed, stitched up, mended, and put back together again. Amen. Can I get amen? Amen. amen? amen. I'm talking about the anointing from the shepherd that are flowing. It's flowing from the head. It's flowing from God. Don't even look at me. I'm talking about a God that has an anointing on him. Amen. And we have to obey the anointing. So if you're going to talk about anybody, you're going to talk about Jesus because he gives the anointing for the shepherds to flow. Amen. And I know you can't beat him. 
I know you can't go against him with your words. Most holy, most faithful, most dedicated. Can't touch nobody. You're too holy. Can't love nobody because you don't want nobody anointing you. You don't want to touch you. When you're going to your job, everybody's shaking your hand. Nobody's anointed over there. But you're speaking to everybody. You come to God's house. Now you're so holy that you can't touch none of your parishioners or your saints. When you go to the job, you're bowing down like you. Hey, hey, how you doing? Bless you. God, hi, hi. Good morning to you too. How you doing? I had a great night. And come to church, your mouth is zipped. When it's time to shout, you're out shouting everybody. Amen. 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 Can't say amen, just say ouch for me one time. Say ouch for me. Ouch. <laughs> I want to finish my assignment with joy and make sure I please the Father. Amen. 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 Watch what it says. Restore such an one in the spirit of meekness. In the spirit of meekness. Considering thyself. And always consider yourself. Lest thou be also tempted. So watch this. The word, the Greek word for sin here in that chapter means, it means a parabola. I'm going to spell it out for you. P-A-R-A-P-T-O-M-A. -A -A. And that means, which means a slippery cross. So what we do when folks are getting stitched up from other stuff, we take ourselves right over there. It didn't call, it's just this, this word sin right here means every sin that we, we do. And what happened, what you do with yourself without restoring folk, when you go over there and you become, you start slipping across what's happening. It's as you're on an icy road. They already slipped, made a mistake. You go over there and make it worse. So when folks slip and break a bone, Anybody know when it's snowing, you can't be going out there like, just you are, run out your house with them shoes on. I guarantee you, your, your feet going to be up this way, your butt going to be down this way, and you're going to break something. Folks are slipping and breaking stuff, and God's trying to heal them. And he got those that are spiritual or those that are in leadership to mind God make sure he mend them back together the right way. Well, I guess this is not a good message for y'all today. Because we want to do anything we want to do. Because we free. We grown. <laughs> we say we want to say. But I'm going to drop this nugget on you today. Take this one up with God. You got to make sure that while folks are hurting, don't you take your slippery self over there because what they've done, <laughs> you've done also. Amen. Don't take your slippery self over there and cause it to be more slippery. Amen. And then nobody can get up on slippery ice. Amen. Let me look at my little text again. Let me get back to my study because y'all looking at me like, oh, pastor, but God knows everything that's going on around every. I'm talking about the church at large now because the sheep are being scattered. And if you don't watch it, they looking for the truth. They're tired of the gimmicks, the games, the money thing, and everything else. They want some truth to live by. Amen? And God wants to deal with our personalities and not how we look and what we're doing. He wants to deal with our heart to make sure that he straightened the heart out first. The heart is desperately wicked. Who can know it? Amen. Watch what it says. I, I, need, I need to get this. To get this. So it, is, it, is, it means a slippery crawl across. And on a icy road. So once you start sinning, you are on an icy road. You can't get your feet in. According to the scriptures, God set our feet on a solid foundation. Amen. Amen. So watch this, and it says the word has no meaning of deliberate sin, but rather of an accident stumbling on a dangerous rocky path. Somebody can bring danger to you. And cause you to miss God while you're trying to mend and heal from what you already been hurt. Amen. 
the shepherds was not caring for them. Amen. When the good Samaritan passed by on the road to Jericho, he, 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 the, the innkeeper told him to put some, take care of him until I come back. He began to mend his wounds. We got a lot of half-dead folk in the church Amen. trying to get out and get some life. Amen. And then we got these physicians. I'm talking about all this. I'm talking about the folk that's living, living holy now. I'm talking about these folk that got all this stuff going. I'm talking about they hearing God. They got dreams. They got vision. They got all this stuff. And then they messing up folk's lives who are already messed up. Amen. Now, y'all was saying amen real loud. You have to watch what you speak on Amen. with your anointing in your mouth. You got to watch what you say when you find stuff out. Should I, Lord, or should I not? And if God don't say nothing, you should not. Now, it's going to come back to you as you grow. Because everybody think they can do anything they want to do, and you can't. The church belongs to Jesus. It don't belong to me. That means I can't say anything I want to say. I only can say what God commanded me to say. Amen. Y'all hold y'all head up. This is, not, this is not a message to beat you up. Hold your head up. Amen. This is a message to correct the house and everybody that's in the body of Christ. Amen. 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 Okay, let me go to your, your boring job you're on. When they have those meetings and you have to go in that, in that room and all that stuff. Oh, my Lord, we got to watch another film. <laughs> <sighs> you got to sit there. The film is to help you get somewhere. But it's boring. Again, not a oh god. Again, they bring in a. Didn't we see this last year? I bet you ain't gonna walk out of there. I don't care how many times you just saw it. I guarantee you ain't walking out of that thing. You gonna sit yourself there? Okay, okay, all right, all right. You gonna get at the front seat, looking like Lord. Let me. I can't go to sleep. It is to help you. They're making sure they rehearse something in your ear to help you. It could be the same thing. They want you to make sure you keep this in front of you. In other words, to be safe. Amen. To make sure you be safe where you're going and what you're doing in the environment you're working in. Amen. I'm trying to make sure you be safe in the environment you're working in. This is God's house. It is his church. He's the one who gives the instruction. And you got to make sure that you are safe doing what you're doing in the ark of safety to obey him. Amen. You mean the same stuff? The, the word ain't changed for nobody. I've been doing it for 15 years. It ain't changed for me and nobody else. It's still the same gospel. And God said, I'm trying to keep you safe. So hold your head up. Do what you're doing your job. Come on, pastor. Please get this by. Do like tape. Lord, this boss. Oh, Lord, look at him. You know how y'all look at your bosses? He ain't matching today. Come on. Look what he got on. You know what I mean? Somebody go up there and fix his tie for him. Amen. Amen. It's only to keep you safe. Amen. David was a good shepherd. He made sure he kept the flock safe. Amen. And so here, wolves came in. And when wolves came in, David fought them all. A lion and a bear, he fought them all. So the shepherd have to keep the wolves off the flock. Amen. You got to know when they're coming in. Amen. You got to know when they're trying stuff. You got to preach the gospel to people. Let them know, watch the wolves. Then you got them in coming in sheep clothing. Amen. And we that in leadership got to know when we're dealing with a wolf. Amen. 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 You got to know what you're dealing with as being under this anointing. Jesus knew he was dealing with. So I want to get to a point, and I'm, I'm, I'm going to get to, I'm going to finish this restore, then I'm going to go with some of Jesus' preaching. I want to I want to make sure that you uh, get some of this good preaching in after I'm setting the foundation. So you got to make sure that this wasn't some, it wasn't, it was an accident, a stumbling in a dangerous rocket path. We get in stuff in church and everything happened then. You don't like it, you get mad and you blaze the trail. Then you go to another church, same stuff happening over there. God's trying to tell you wherever you go. <laughs> it ain't going nowhere until you get yourself straight. <laughs> now, until you get straight and start everybody's business and trying to control everybody and you know what this perverted, I tell you, perverted love is controlled love. Amen. Y'all not going to stone me, huh? Let who have no sin cast the first. Amen. So that means I can still preach. And so it say the word caught in the same verse means trap. So what you do, you get yourself in a trap. 
and you snare by your words. And now you're falling everywhere because you won't let God deal with you. And the anointing is on the inside of you. He's trying to make sure the anointing flow out of you. But we're so busy beating each other up until we let the anointing just come to a stop. Y'all going to say amen. Amen. I know y'all want to not hear the word of God. I know y'all think God want us to hear something to tickle our wheels all the time. Jesus was preaching. I'm like, Jesus was preaching. He said one thing. And all his disciples turned back except the twelve. Y'all, this is not a feel-good gospel. Get off the slippery road. Quit thinking your feet is solid when you're slipping too. Let me look at my minister. Let me, let me look at y'all. Don't quit thinking your feet is solid when you're slipping too. You can easily slip with your thought process. Sin can come easily up on anybody. You can think about somebody wrong and be sinning. You can travel information somebody gave you and be sinning. And you don't have the truth about what they gave you. And you're with the whole sin. The whole sin is sin. So I'm not saying somebody deliberately sinned. That's why that sin wasn't a deliberate. It was a sin that everybody was doing and they were slipping. And then when person, a person fall, then nobody was correcting them. Amen. You get a sludge hammer and beat them all up and keep them down while your wounds are still open. Amen. You got a hammer and nail trying to still nail them to the cross. Jesus already been to the cross. Amen. You know how we can get holy? We get holy about our children. We get holy about other stuff. You can talk about somebody's child, but nobody can talk about yours. You can nail somebody else's child to the cross, but nobody can nail yours. The shepherd has to make sure he pulls the right all into the womb that they can mend and heal and that the stitches will come out the right way. Don't they make stitches that now they just fall out? So when God stitch you up, it'll fall right out. And nobody that know, but God has healed you on the inside. This is what the church is messing up. They're looking for folks to do big sins. They forget about the small sins. And so what we do, we want to call all the big stuff out and forget all the small stuff that people are doing. It is the small thing that spoils the vine. You stealing on your job? You know, you should be, I don't know what, I ain't been on a job in 15 years now, so if the time clock is still there, you get somebody to clock you in. If the time clock is still there, y'all just uh, walk in now. <laughs> I just want to know, do y'all just walk in, sign a paper or what? What y'all do? Y'all right now? Well, I don't know. I ain't been there in a while. Swipe. I don't know what they do. Yep. Y'all got to... Swipe. Oh, y'all swiping now with the card, right? The, 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 your ID card? Okay, you can't cheat no longer then. You can't cheat no But when they was in the time clock, somebody would be 30 minutes, man, t- clock me in, man. And you know you're still in time. I'm from the time clock era. Man, clock, anybody else that phone? I, I, I can't do it. You got to get somebody else to do it. You clocked in, somebody sitting out, eyeballing out and clock you in. You done stole all that time. Nobody knew you were doing it but God. So we're talking about little small things we do and nobody can see. <laughs> little stuff we do cause people to miss God. Amen. I mean, let me get out here and go to my preaching. Y'all ready to stone me in this place. I got eight minutes. Everybody say, hurry up eight minutes. <laughs> Jesus wants us to restore. It means to repair our men, to fix, to make fit. God wants to make sure everything is fixed. He's the only one that can do it. If I put my big mouth on it, I can mess it up. Did y'all see that fifth? That fifth they, say they, they ran off and they didn't go look for him. They, 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 they use cruel force on them. 
Amen. They sent them letters when they weren't supposed to send them letters. They fell on hard time, then they still send them letters so your ties ain't matching your monies. Uh-oh. I'm talking about being cool to people that God has put power on. The only living God who put power on people from the cross. And we are disturbing the healing process with all that we think we know. And God is saying, you're messing with my flock. Can I get amen on this? I guess God don't want me to preach. He want me to teach this to y'all. When people are being restored, you got to let God heal them. And you can't keep going in the garbage can. You can't keep going in the garbage can pulling stuff up. Trying to find everything out about somebody. Stay in the spirit realm. Be spiritual. Not, nobody can do you anyway. Amen. Just can't live holy. God got power on you. Amen. Don't be afraid to come and worship God because you slipped. Amen. Or somebody has said something about you that they done slipped also. Amen. They slipped before you slipped. Amen. Now they didn't got their self together and now they telling everybody who's slipping. Amen. Amen. Carpet. Amen. God is telling us not to even open our mouth on some stuff. Amen. And we'll still do it. So before revival come and God has anointed us, it has to be some repentance. Because the shepherd who's over everybody knows everything. Amen, Walls. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. Amen. One person says a good word. <laughs> this is what the shepherd have to do when he comes to instruct. Everything ain't going to be high praise all the time. Amen. To get you in order that you can't cross over in nobody's lane. And then when you mess it up, I have to go run behind them. Amen. Call them, ask why they left. Guess what they tell me? Somebody said something about them. And I don't come back and tell you because they call your name out. Amen. And I got to go and try to keep them in the house Amen. after you run them out the house. Amen. Four minutes and counting. Amen. And I got to go behind them after you to mess them up. Then I got to go get them and ask them. They have a choice. Some of them come back and some of them don't come back. Over people being mean to them because they think they are nobody. And then I send some of the people to you and you're still mean to them. Then they come back and say, I don't want to go that long because they were very mean to me. And I'm thinking you got a pleasant anointing on you. It's only pleasant when you're around the pastor. The anointing should be pleasant everywhere you go. Church family, I pray that you were uplifted by this wonderful message. If you would like to find out more about Pastor Guevara Johnson and Interdenominational Faith Assembly, visit their website and follow them on social media to keep up with more great sermons, praise and worship, and all of their activities. I'm Megan Reed, and I want to thank you for watching The Daily Gospel Network. And until next time, remember, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me.